Hello, hello! This is Panda, and I'm here together with Spire. In the 1.11 pre-release, we showed a 320 meter per second elevator and transportation system. There were many open questions about it in the comments, so we will try to explain it today. But before we get to it, we will take a look at how pistons developed over the last couple of versions. We go back as far as 1.8. In this version, slime blocks were added, and at the time, no one involved thought of adjusting the entity movement code for them. The result of this was that entities just didn't get moved by retracting blocks at all, which is one of the main reasons why there were so many fixes in this direction in 1.9 and now 1.11. But it was far from being the only issue with moving blocks. When we look at the collision boxes of moving blocks in slow motion, we can see that they are far off from what would be expected. This is also what made entities and players drop through moving blocks. On top of that, blocks with multiple collision boxes only had a single one while moving. Blocks with changeable collision boxes could change their box pretty much randomly, especially while being moved by a piston. So in short, moving blocks were a mess. After the fixes in 1.9, blocks with multiple collision boxes still only had a single box, but most other issues were gone. Retracting blocks started to move entities, the collision box matched the movement of the block, and it didn't change at random anymore. However, there were a few new issues in 1.9. When entities should get moved, they were instead warped in front of the moving blocks, sometimes even if they shouldn't have moved at all. Also, the collision box of the piston base was missing on retraction. In combination, this led to pistons sucking in entities in front of them. Judging from that, the recent changes in 1.11 look promising. Even complex shapes are kept while the block is moving, and each moving block only moves the entities by the distance it covered in that tick. Furthermore, walking and standing on moving blocks is not a problem anymore, and even difficult cases of moving entities work fine now. There are still a few small bugs with the entity movement code, but no major ones anymore as far as we can tell. The small ones we found in 1.11 are the following. Fences, walls and fence gates don't move entities in the upper part of their collision box. The collision boxes of connected blocks disconnect while the blocks are moving. Blocks which can connect use the world origin at 000 to calculate the boxes in which entities should be moved, causing entities outside of the block to be moved as well. And last but not least, moving blocks can move entities into other moving blocks. And this is what our 320 meter per second transporter is based on. Before we continue, let me make this clear. The 320 meter per second transportation is not intended behavior. If you plan on using it, be sure that it will very likely stop working in a future version, and please don't be upset when this happens. It is fun to play around with bugs, but we cannot expect them to stay. Other than previous near instant transportation systems, this one is not based on the translocation bug. Each moving block only moves you by the amount itself moved, which is half a block per tick. The reason why it still can be so fast is that each moving block moves the entity into another moving block which will get processed later in the very same tick. At the beginning of the lines we have a repeater and a comparator. They have the same delay, but repeaters get processed before comparators, so we know the side with the repeater triggers first. From there on, each piston adds a block event for the next piston when it gets processed. This gives the pistons a nice processing order along the way. When the moving blocks are ticked, the first one will move the entity forward by half a block. Then the second one, which is right on top of the first one, will do the same. Now the entity was moved one block and is right inside the next moving blocks on the other side. This pattern continues, and even so no tick passes, the entity can be moved a virtually infinite distance. But where does the speed limit of 320 blocks per second come from? That is another bug. In Minecraft, each 16x16x16 16 by 16 by 16 section has a list of the entities inside it. When a moving block checks which entities it needs to move, it will look at that list to find them. Entities that get moved into other sections don't get removed from the old list and added to the new one right away. Instead, it will do so when the entity is ticked the next time. As the moving blocks move the entity right after each other, the entity will not be ticked in between and will therefore not be added to the list of the next section. And as it is not on the list, it will not be found by moving blocks in this section. To solve this problem, we made the setup wait for one tick every 16 blocks. This way, the entity will get ticked and add itself to the next section's list before it is moved again. A neat trick we found to further improve the design is to use two game ticks delay every 32 blocks rather than one game tick every 16 blocks. This is possible because moving blocks take three game ticks to fully finish their movement. So in the first tick the entity will get moved to right after the first chunk border. Then the entity is ticked and added to the next section's list. After that the moving blocks are processed a second time and move the entity 16 blocks again. And now the entity is ticked again and added to the next list. And from there the process continues. The concept works with all blocks, but fence gates and trapdoors make it easier to build the station where the two tick delay is added. In the description you can find a world download containing showcases of the mentioned bugs, two elevator and two conveyor belt designs. 
The first elevator is the one you could see in our last video. It uses retracting pistons and one tick delay stations. Fitting to the elevator, there is a transporter using retracting pistons. However, it uses two tick delay stations and an improved control mechanism using observers to simplify the design. The other elevator and transporter are both based on butted pistons and also have two tick delay stations. The pistons take care of both, the wiring and the block movement, making these designs the most compact ones. If you want to take a closer look or build one of the designs, you can use the world download as a reference. If you are building it, make sure to keep the alignment with the chunks. Also, just keep in mind that these designs are not based on features but on bugs and there is no reason to expect them to stay. A big thank you to Spire. We developed these concepts as well as the designs together. If you haven't yet, I can just recommend you to take a look at his channel for similar content. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Oh, by the way, the fact that connecting blocks use the origin to calculate the box in which they move entities can be used for wireless redstone from 000 to anywhere else in the world. Bye!